Wall Street indices close up to 2% lower, led by the Nasdaq, while yields do slide on mixed economic data and corporate earnings. Shares of First Republic Bank slide nearly 50% as deposits drop 40%. Stock futures, however, rise after Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet report better than expected earnings. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific open largely lower. The SGX Nifty 2 is signaling a negative start for the Indian market. And concerns of a global economic slowdown and a stronger dollar weigh on crude prices. Brent corrects over 2% to trade around $81 as a stronger dollar also pushes prices lower. Bajaj Auto's margin expands for the third straight quarter to hit a nine-quarter high as earnings exceed street expectations. Data Consumer 2 delivers a strong quarter reporting a beat on all fronts. And Maruti Suzuki is expected to report a good quarter with higher volume aiding revenue growth. A strong quarter is also expected from Bajaj Finance with healthy growth in assets under management. Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are the top headlines that we have for you on this Wednesday morning. There's lots that's come through in terms of earnings, both in the US as well as in our own markets post uh, closing yesterday. So there's clearly a lot of that to talk about. The handover hasn't been positive. Like I was mentioning, we saw a big cut on Wall Street indices on the back of what we saw with First Republic Bank and just, you know, concerns over the banking crisis. But the good news is that the futures have recovered significantly because we did have some of the big tech earnings which came in better than expected. On the back of that, Asia pretty mixed this morning. And by the way, there has been a recovery in the past few minutes as well. So the Hang Seng has recovered to trade quite flat right now. Taiwan's still under pressure, though it is around half a percent lower on that front. But Shanghai, Kospi have both moved into the green right now. There's no big, uh, big gain at all. But you know, at least we have seen a recovery come through in the past 10-15 minutes odd. You have the um, straits, which is seeing a cut of around four tenths of a percent. Shanghai absolutely flat and Kospi around a quarter of a percent in the green. So very mixed across Asia right now, but it is a little bit negative in terms of what we're seeing on the Nikkei, which is also down around half a percent. The SGX Nifty will come up for you. It is indicating a bit of a red start for our own market. So we're currently around 30 points lower, 32 to be precise on the SGX Nifty. That's what's happening in Asia. But let's also talk about the US markets because there was a lot of action that came through. We had Wall Street, which ended lower, taking cues from big corporate earnings. So the Dow Jones was down around 1% at the close. The S&P 500 lost 1.6%. And the Nasdaq index was the big underperformer. It was down 2% at the close. We have CNBC's Bertha Coombs to get us a wrap of all of that action from Wall Street. A down day on Wall Street as investors' concerns about First Republic Bank rekindled fears about regional banks in general. The Dow shedding over 300 points, the S&P ending down about 1.5%, while the Nasdaq finished almost 2% lower. First Republic stock plunging 40% today after the regional bank said it lost more than $100 billion in deposits during the first quarter. The bank said deposit inflows have since stabilized and it is pursuing strategic options to reshape its balance sheet. Still, the stock is down about 90 percent over the past two months since Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. Meanwhile, shares of Pepsi hitting a 52-week high after the beverage and snack giant posted better than expected earnings. The company also raising its outlook for the year after seeing big sales increases. And General Motors planning to end production of the Chevy Bolt, its first mass electric uh, vehicle. They'll end that production later this year. The Bolt makes up the majority of GM's electric vehicle sales to date. But CEO Mary Barra says the EV's production plant will be retooled to prepare for electric trucks slated for next year. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back over to you in Mumbai. All right, Bertha, thanks a lot for that. But actually stay on because, you know, like I was pointing out, the futures have recovered quite a lot and are trading higher following big tech earnings that came through in the U.S. Uh, this is, of course, post-market close. We had Microsoft, which beat Wall Street expectations. Also, Google parent Alphabet posted better than expected on the revenue front. So, uh, Bertha, take us through the numbers over there because we are definitely seeing a little bit of optimism on the, uh, on the future prices. Alphabet's first quarter adjusted earnings were 9% above expectations at $1.17 per share. Uh, the company also beating on the top line with $69.8 billion in sales. Cloud sales 
came in in line up about 28% from a year ago. YouTube sales were also in line, though advertisement revenues of $54.5 billion was down about 1% from a year ago, marking the second consecutive quarterly decline. On the conference call right now, they're talking an awful lot about integrating AI into uh, search. That's the big buzzword these days. The same for Microsoft as well. Microsoft shares higher after results beat handily. Earnings coming in at 224 a share, nearly 10% above expectations. Revenues of 52.9 billion, nearly 2 billion more than the analysts were looking for. The Azure Cloud Computing Division saw sales up 27% year over year. That was in line, but the company's uh, lowest quarterly sales growth ever in that division. Still, that offset declines in personal computing and just 3% growth in Xbox and services, but they're talking all about how they're going to integrate AI into everything they're doing, which is what the street was looking for and what is really a driving that move here. All right, Bertha, thanks a lot for getting us all of those earnings from Microsoft as well as Alphabet. With that, let's also listen into some important comments. This comes in from veteran investor Peter Lynch, who's also the vice chairman of Fidelity Management and Research on the likelihood that he sees of a recession. Well, we've had 13 recessions since World War II, and we've had 13 recoveries. Maybe we're going to have one. If this is a recession, it's probably the most predicted one ever. You know, I never know when we're going to go. I'd love to know the future. I'd, I think I'd give, it would help. I'd be a better investor. I'd pay five extra dollars for next year's Wall Street Journal. It would really help. Right. I cannot predict the future, but this one, this recession is so expected, so predicted. Maybe it's coming. I don't know. All right, that is an important word coming in from Peter Lynch, but that's what we're tracking globally. Let's now talk about all of the domestic cues as well that you should watch as we get into this trading session. Reema, Mangalam and Surbi are all with us with, to, to take you through the trade setup this morning. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Reema, let me come to you first. We were going through the global setup. Looks like we're in for a bit of a negative start, but take us through everything we should watch. Well, it looks like the start could be negative, but as you pointed out, markets have started recovering in Asia as well. And even uh, if you track uh, the U.S. futures, there is a bit of a recovery. So let's see whether this uh, beat on uh, the tech earnings from uh, Microsoft as well as Alphabet can have a rub off impact on the global markets and propel them higher. For the SGX Nifty, um, as you said, it's slightly lower in trade, but we'll be tracking if there is an improvement from here. Yesterday, the Nifty slipped from levels of 17,800 in late trade to close absolutely flat. The key levels to track from here on will be the April series closing high of 17,828 and the April series intraday high of 17,863. Yesterday, you had the DII's buy 563 crore in the cash market, but the DII buy figure has been coming down. On Friday, they bought nearly 1,600 crore in the cash market. On Monday, their buy figure was almost approaching 1,200 crore, but yesterday, it's come down to 563 crore. The FI's net sold 407 crore in the cash market. Net-net, we're looking at an institutional buy figure of 157 crore. Lots of earnings to track, and they've largely been pretty okay. So whether it's Bajaj Auto or Tata Consumer, AU Small Finance, there have been more hits than misses in the earnings picture. So uh, that on the sidelines is positive for the momentum. Remember, we are close to the expiry. Tomorrow is the expiry for the April series. We have been seeing positive momentum over the last couple of days. Let's see whether it can carry us forward. Big earnings day again. Bajaj Finance, HDFC Life Insurance, Maruti Suzuki, SBI Life Insurance, to name a few. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues that we should track. But with that, let's also talk about the individual stocks that could be in focus in today's trading session. Surbi has that entire list, and we also got some big earnings post-close. So Surbi, take us through everything we should watch. Hi, thanks so much for that. So we'll be reacting to quite a few numbers today. The first one is Tata Consumer Products. Good set of numbers there. Revenue was up 14%. The EBITDA was up 15%. Margins have come in stable at around 14%. Next is Bajaj Auto. Again, a stable set of numbers. Revenue was up nearly 12%. The EBITDA was up 26%. And margins have come in higher by nearly 200 basis points at 19% versus 17% same time last year. 
Dalmia Bharat, a mixed bag, the revenue was higher than the poll, came in at around 3,900 or crores, but margins were a miss, came in lower by around 200 basis points at 18% versus a poll of 20%. AU Small Finance Bank, the deposit saw a growth of 32% on a year-on-year -year basis and close to 14% sequentially. The AUM was up 25% on a year-on-year -year basis. Some other companies that may react to its numbers is Mahindra CIE Automotive, Mahindra Life Spaces, VST Industries and also Nippon Life AMC. Few other companies that will be watching out who will be announcing their results today are Bajaj Finance, HDFC Life, SBI Life and Maruti Suzuki. All right, Zarbi, thanks a lot for that entire list of stocks. We're going to watch for all of these. And it's now over to Mangalam who's looking at all of the cues from the futures and options space. Hi, Mangalam. So there has been a fair amount of consolidation in the markets. Uh, the range in the nif for the Nifty of the last one week is actually the range uh, which we're looking at for the market to sustain in the near future as well. 17,550 for the lower level and 17,800 at the higher level itself. And that's where the consolidation has happened yesterday as well. The minute we crossed way past uh, the higher levels or approached near the 17,800 mark, we could see a bit of a sell-off. But then the Nifty consolidated. Uh, the, the, the queues coming in from the cash market uh, net each other off. The FI is selling 400 crores. The DI is buying about 560 crores. A net positive of 150 crores. But what's positive is that the expiry week continues to favor the bulls. The FIs continue to cover their short positions. And while they net bought around 527 crores in index futures, there was short covering to the tune of 7,000 contracts. And as a result of which, the FII long exposure from 44% has inched higher to around 45%. Yesterday was also financial services expiry, so no directional cues coming in from the FIs in the op option space. But remember, the fulcrum of the market has now moved higher to 17,800. So the 17,800 call writers have been active, as have the 17,800 put writers. So together, the premium on this straddle is close to around 100 odd rupees. So the street basically is bracing itself for a range of 17,600 at the lower level and 17,800, 17,900 at the higher level itself, and that really ties in with the technical levels as well. 17,625 is the 200-day moving average, and 17,830 is the 100-day moving average itself. The put call ratio is inching closer to that 1.2 mark, which suggests overbought zones for the market. That also tells you that at higher levels, we may face some sort of supply problems. Today, the index to watch out for will be the mid-cap index because it's also Wednesday, weekly options expiry for the mid-cap index. All right, Mangalam, thanks a lot for running us through all of those cues. Now that we've prepped you for everything that you should watch globally as well as for the domestic markets, it is time for a short break on the show. But when we come back, like we told you, Bajaj, Auto and Tata Consumer both posted their fourth uh, quarter earnings post-market as. So we're going to break down all of the numbers on the other side. Red. Yellow. Mm, I, I'm a chameleon. It's my job to change color. But your wealth manager? Uh, well, they, 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 they shouldn't be copying me, you know. Uh, you know that, uh, right? Choose Nuvama. We only do what's right for you and your money. Nuvama. Let's do it right. Chale. Enjoy Volta's pure air adjustable AC with HEPA filter. Lies soft handy hawa seedhe aapke kar. Go be chair adjustable tonnage boards. So, hawa or savings? Do not internet. Gunavata ki baat chali hai. Ek nai shuruvat mili hai. Parivartan ko gale laga kar apna engagement. Production bar poor badhega. Profit bhi ab khub chadhega. Aam ko nai disha dikha kar apna engagement. Register with Ministry of MSME's Set Certification Scheme today. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. And let's now talk about the big earnings that came through post-market close yesterday. We are Tata Consumer, which posted a good set of fourth quarter numbers. So Mangalam is back with us to take us through the highlights. Uh, Mangalam, looks like it's better than expected on all fronts. It is better than expected on all fronts. Uh, using the Tata Consumer products itself, I'd say it's a strong brew. Why is that? Because, you know, uh, the companies beat expectations on all fronts. That's point number one. Secondly, the launches, the new launches in FY23 have been two times what they did in FY22. Starbucks, uh, for the entire year, crossed 1,000 crores in revenue for the first time ever. 
and the stock already had seen a bit of a jump of 5% on Monday. So let's see how it reacts today. Just on the numbers, 3,619 crores on the top line. The street was working with a number a little over 3,500 crores. The EBITDA came in at 511 crores against expectations of 472 crores. Margins were a 60, 70 basis points beat. And we had the net profit as well coming in at 350 crores versus expectations of 265 crores. Even the internals, the India business grew at 15%. The street was working with a number of 10 to 12 odd percent. The foods business grew at 26%, largely in ex on expected lines, as did the packet beverages. We had nourishment. Rishko uh, reporting, you know, 181 crores of revenue. That's a 79% jump year on year. And the street was working with a number of just around 50, uh, 150-odd crores. The international business, too, grew a revenue of, uh, showed a revenue growth of 10% versus expectations of 2 to 3%. What was uh, extremely positive was the international EBIT margins showing sequential improvement from 9.9% to 12.9%. And the company is increasing its total reach. It's increasing its market share in the salt portfolio. And at the same time, Starbucks is doing extremely well as well. All right, Mangalam, thanks a lot for running us through all of those numbers for Tata Consumer. The other big one that came through was from Bajaj Auto. The first of the big auto earnings coming through. Uh, Sonia, this again, better than expected, right? Oh, absolutely. And I expect the stock to be in the green today because the numbers were better than what the street was estimating. Now, it was a third consecutive quarter of a margin improvement for Bajaj Auto. And that's something that the street will definitely like. Uh, one of the brokerages said that these are a good set of numbers in what is a very challenging environment. I'll come to that in a bit. Margins up 220 basis points year on year at 19.3%. Revenue growth of around 6.7%. Core EBITDA up almost about 9.1%. Now, just to tell you what a couple of brokerages are saying, Jeffrey says that this is a strong Q4 in tough times. They've retained a buy. They have a target price of 5100. They've, in fact, raised their target price to 5100 versus 4800 earlier. Motilal Oswal says it's a strong product product mix that has driven an all-round beat and the EBITDA margin is at a nine-quarter high. So good set of numbers coming in. The management says that it is a sustained momentum on the domestic front that led to a strong double-digit revenue growth, which more than made up for the setback in exports. So I'm going with green for the stock today. All right, green for the stock for Bajaj Auto. But also, Sonia, we have Maruti, which will report its fourth uh, quarter's numbers. Uh, what are we expecting on that? So, you know, uh, for Maruti, now this is a decent set of numbers expected this quarter. Volumes have come back in a big way. And uh, that's also because of the recovery in demand. There was a festive season, a slew of new launches, easing of the supply chain constraints. All of that will lead to a 23% revenue growth. Now, on the volume side, volume growth was just about 5.5%. But realizations have gone up about 16% because of the price hike that Maruti undertook and that will aid the numbers this time around. So I'm going with an improvement in the margins to 10.7% versus 9.1% same time last year and the profitability could rise by almost about 50 odd percent. So the margins will be led by A, a favorable product mix, B, price hikes and operating leverage benefits. But the stock has been absolutely flat in 2023. The expectation is that Maruti will get to 25% market share in the SUV segment from 18% currently because of the slew of new launches and that's the hope that the market it is going with. More details on that awaited. All right, Sonia, thanks a lot for running us through all of the estimates there. The other one that we should track today is Bajaj Finance. That one is also going to report fourth quarter numbers today. So Abhishek is here to tell us more. Abhishek, good quarter expected? Uh, well, on the bottom line front, yes, good quarter is expected as per analyst poll. They've already given the business update, uh, which uh, unlike other Q4s that you have seen over the last two to three years, this Q4 has been pretty healthy or pretty much better than previous Q4. So uh, new loans are up about 20.6% YOI and down about 3.1% uh, quarter on quarter. Quarter on quarter in the historical trend, it's been 8% to 16% decline, but that is only 3.1% this time around. Customer base has remained strong both in terms of YOI and quarter on quarter growth. The cross sell rate is on the lower side coming in at 6.7%. So how that will impact the PNL? We need to see that also. AM growth remains robust, 28.8% YOI and 7.15% quarter on quarter. So sequentially, it's one of the best growth in last four quarters. And average ticket size that I have calculated is up 7.3% YOI and about 2.5% quarter on quarter. So Motilal Oswal is expecting a spread and net interest margin compression of 30 basis point on a sequential basis. Now, asset quality is expected to improve on a sequential basis. Robust part growth will be led by the fact that provisions may decline on a sequential basis. So, management commentary with respect to future outlook will be very important in terms of how they see the growth and how they see the uh, net interest margin panning out. Our poll suggests an NII growth of 23.8% YOI and about 1% sequentially. We are working with a profit growth of 28.5% YOI and about 4.6% sequentially. Back to you.
All right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for running us through all of the estimates for Bajaj Finance also. Those are the big earnings to watch, Bajaj, uh, sorry, Maruti Suzuki and Bajaj Finance. Those are the ones that we're tracking. But with that, it is time for another short break. On the other side, we're going to bring you all of the cues from the commodity markets. There's once again been a 2% drop in prices. We'll bring you up to speed. Can you start banking with Asia's safest bank instantly? Yes, you can. But can I also find a branch before I finish this? Yep, on your phone and at 500 plus branches in India. And what if I need a bank for my business? We've got you too. For not just small businesses, but for the really big ones too. Live more, bank less. DBS. This one's a turbo. 1.5? Nice. The all-new Hyundai Verna. Futuristic. Ferocious. गुणवत्ता की बात चली है एक नई शुरुआत मिली है परिवर्तन को गले लगाकर अपनाएंगे Register for MSME Z certification today. हर इंसान की खुशी की परिभाषा अलग होती है जैसे कोई अपना स्टार्टअप खोलकर खुश है तो कोई अपना घर बनाकर तो कोई एक नन्हे मेहमान को घर लाकर वजह चाहे कोई भी हो लाखों करोड़ों लोगों की तरह आप भी मुदुर फाइनेंस से गोल्ड लोन लीजिए और अपनी हर खुशी को पंख दीजिए मुदुर फाइनेंस गोल्ड लोन खोलिए खुशियों की तिजोरी आज ही कॉल कीजिए वन एट हंड्रेड थ्री वन थ्री वन टू वन टू अरे अभी तो किया नहीं आपने Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast, and let's now talk about the world of commodities. Manisha joins us now with an update. Manisha, really never a dull day when it comes to crude. Oh yes, and another 20 percent, uh, rather 2 percent decline coming in yet again. Overnight markets, we have seen decline coming in on the back of weaker demand expectations. The markets also are looking at the fact that uh, there is shrinking oil refining profits. The U.S. weekly inventories also have declined by six million barrels as per the API data. So that tells you that the demand also seems to be suffering, and that's weighing onto the crude oil prices. Well, the important thing is that the Golden Week holiday in China is what the markets are looking at, and whether or not that can drive fuel. demand going forward but it's a week day for the metals also with china construction starts declining 20% for the first quarter of 2023 markets have seen an impact of that so the iron ore prices have declined to the lowest since december copper is now trading at a one month lows zinc is trading at a two year lows there is a more pressure that you've seen come in for metals like steel nickel etc so most of these metals have started asia yet again on a weaker note All right, Manisha. Thanks a lot for bringing us all of that update on the commodities. Uh, but with that, it is time to talk about some more important news developments that we're tracking this morning. U.S. President Joe Biden has formally announced that he is running for re-election in 2024, asking voters to give him more time to finish this job. Now, remember, if Biden does win the second term, he would extend his streak as the oldest person to sit in office. So that is some important news that we're tracking. But with that, here's some somber news coming in, and this is from Punjab. Five-time Chief Minister and Shiromani Akali Dal veteran Prakash Singh Badal passed away in Mohali on Tuesday, and it marks the end of an era in Indian politics. He was 95 years old. The Akali Dal stalwart will be cremated at the Badal's family village on Thursday. Now, leaders from across political spectrum, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi, condoled his passing. India has also announced two days of state mourning following his demise. 